Morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Wednesday for those that are here live. Happy whatever day of the week it is that you tune in. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are entering into this period of time as we prepare ourselves for the holiday of freedom, which applies to everybody, regardless of your background or denomination of religion. Everyone can learn lessons. Yesterday, we got to a place where we tried to identify the great block to our lives, which is the block of comfort, this desire for comfort, this need to be comfortable. I'm channeling the rabbi again, who I quote a lot, Rabbi Levi, who teaches me a lot. This idea that We want things to just be comfortable. We want everything to just, like he said to me recently, peaceful. And when we are encountering circumstances in life, we, it's, we, we retract. We retract from circumstances that will be uncomfortable because there's such a need, there's such a value we place in our lives for just being comfortable, just, just letting it be quiet. Just, everyone just stop fighting. Everything just be what it is. It's who we are. And depending on where you come from, it's stronger or lighter, usually at least from my expectations, people that grow up in a much more difficult scenarios, they, they overcome this differently. I'm not saying everyone in Israel is like this, but when you grow up in Israel, and especially when you grow up in a world that's challenging, you go into the army when you're young, you're dealing with threats consistently, you see a different way in which people deal with challenges. They confront them very differently. And you grow up in a much more of a softer world. I'm not saying people don't have personal challenges. But societal challenges may not be as strong. You see that the, the way we confront things are very different. We want everyone to like us. We want to be accepted by everybody. We do. It's part of life. We want people to like us. We want everyone to like us. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to be different until it's cool to be different. The only time you want to be different when it's normal to be different. And when, we, when we're constantly living in a world where our values, our identity is connected in some form to this idea of acceptance, this idea of comfort, it's healthy in that there's a lot of good things to that a lot of good that you there's a lot of good in, in 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 resisting you know confrontation because lots of confrontation is just selfishness but it prevents us from looking at reality sometimes i'm not speaking from any level of mastery just for full disclosure i am struggling with this as much as anybody else Looking at reality for all of its raw, harsh facts sometimes and being strong enough to say, I'm going to be bigger. It's going to be great. God's going to, God's with us. He expects of us, but he's with us. That's, that's one of the greatest blocks to freedom that we have. This freedom of, yeah. This freedom of, I'm okay looking at whatever's in front of me. I know in my core, there's a world that's bigger than me. And my job is to push through things that are uncomfortable because they're right. And when you, when you sort of digest that, when you sort of get into that space, 
where I'm not constantly striving to go back to comfort. I'm not leaving my house and getting excited to go back to bed. I'm not leaving my couch and getting excited to come back to my couch. I'm not leaving everyone's like getting along, even though we have issues, but we don't want to say it, or I want to be something, or I want to, I believe I should do something, but I, I just don't want anyone to look at me. And then as soon as that's done, I go back into my shell. When a person stands up and says, I'm willing to grapple with what's inside me and to what's around me and what's right and just do it consistently and so often till it feels normal to me. I don't want to go back to the couch. I want to go forward where I, it's uncomfortable to sit on the couch in life and to go one step further. If God throws me a challenge, I'm going to work on my mentality to believe that that challenge that is before me, even though I have no idea why, is for my benefit. It will make me stronger. It will make me greater. It will draw some bit of spirituality out from the recesses of my soul into the world around me. And I will bring more positive divine energy to this world that would never have come out but for the way i am dealing with the challenges that are before me that's probably what the jews were going through in their heads when they had to stare at the god of egypt and slaughter it and then take the blood and put it on the outside of their home I mean, it's hard enough people to wear a, a, a Yankees jersey in, in, in Fenway Park. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard enough to go into it. You know, it's hard enough to go with like a, a, a Vikings jersey to, to Lambeau Field. Who does that? They're attacking the god of Egypt and high-stepping. You know how hard that was? They had to stare down that fear and put their trust in God. But not like, yeah, I sort of believe. Oh, man, yeah, of course, I believe. No, I believe. <laughs> we have people from Minnesota on. Denise makes sure she she pointed out that Viking fans, I know, I know. Minnesota, Minnesotans are, do I say that right? Minnesotans, they're tough. Judy's on too. Yeah, I know. We got a couple people from Minnesota that tune in. They're all for putting on jerseys and going Lambeau Field. You know, there's belief and then there's belief. You can go your whole life believing in God and not really believing in God. You can go your whole life nodding. But when push comes to shove, not really. You can go your whole life that way. And what took place on Passover to get to Passover was people had to step up and be big and get rid of all that stuff that was not really holding them down, but pretended to hold them down. There's a voice in our heads that's keeping us down. There's a voice in our heads that's keeping us weak. That voice whispers, don't do it. You're not strong enough. If you even think about the raw reality, it's going to it's gonna make you crazy. Just put your head in the sand. That's what I believe you told me days ago. Stop putting your head in this. Whatever I was talking to him about. Just so everybody knows that I have my mentors that I go to and they beat me up sweetly, nicely, etc. Rabbi Levy is one of them. And he told this to me a week ago in, in a particular area that I was speaking to him about. Stop putting your head in the sand. It's not going to go away. If you don't pick your head up in the sand and look at it. He's right. He's right. 
And it's hard. It's hard for us sometimes to look at our life, look ourselves in the mirror and say, I should really be more. It's hard to have conversations that we should have, to take on responsibilities that we should take on, to ask for things that we should ask for, to, it's hard to be more when we're getting used to being who we are. And there are times where we're forced into it and it's hard, but we were forced into it. So we like had no choice, but no one forced anyone to do anything in Passover. God gave them an option. A lot of them opted to stay. They didn't make it out, but they opted. And God didn't you notice how we played this in his brilliant way. He didn't have Moses show up and go, hey, everybody, we're leaving. No, he gave you a choice. Are you going to take the lamb? Are you going to take the sheep? Are you going to do it? Are you willing? Like, are you willing to be big? Are you prepared for this? This journey, this Jewish journey, I got to tell you, it ain't going to be easy, God's saying. Oh, it'll be great. You can do crazy stuff. You can have a crazy history to rely on. And you're going to see things that it's going to blow you away if you pay attention. Trust me. But it ain't going to be easy. You're not going to roll into some country and you're going to surrounded by water and, and you know, look, t- tall, fortified walls at which you'll sit peacefully for the next, you know, 3,000 years. It ain't going to, I'm moving you to the Middle East. Like, it's, <laughs> we're going to be in the busiest corridor of the world. And even when you're sitting here quietly, people are coming after you. You're going to go through the entire planet by the time we're done with this. And you're, even when you go back home, which I will take you back home, you're not going to have like a care package of like, you know, hummus and hashish and like, welcome back. It ain't going to happen that way. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to be a crazy ride. You're going to see things and be things that'll be unbelievable. but you got to be willing. And I got to tell you, and, and, I, and I, I mean it to, to the credit of so many, especially so many people that have been part of the beginning of the foundation of the state, and even now the state of Israel. To me, that was one of their greatest achievements is the strength to stare reality in the face and say, this is just what it is. Let's make it better. Really. Freedom is being able to hold the gaze at what we got to do long enough till we realize we got to do it. It's not putting our head in the sand. It's not blaming someone else for our problems. It's not holding grudges for things that we should really forgive. It's not holding back because we're scared to fail and then blaming society or whoever else. No, it's not saying that I, you know, sometimes I hear this, I wish I would have grown up with more of a a spiritual education. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, we all do. We always, everyone wishes they had more. It's 2021. You can do whatever you want now. Well, you know, I'm I'm this old. I'm like, who cares? Who cares how old you are? You're smart. You're brilliant. You have access to everything in the world. I don't really do this well or that well. I'm like, so what? So what? Do it now. What are you waiting for? And in the same way, in the same way, that's freedom. That's freedom. I got to tell you, that's freedom. Is, 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 is there more freedom than that? Like, can you think of things that are more free than that? Being courageous to stare at life for all of its, for the, all of its uh, uh, sweet things and sour things and being able to be courageous to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to push forward and I'm not scared. 
to walk with life, to walk with God, and to say, he brought me out of Egypt. You think he's going to abandon me? And even if I don't understand his ways, I need to understand his ways for me to be courageous in my life. He's got to prove more to me. He's got, he's got more to prove. He brought back a nation for 2,000 years to its homeland and the entire country blossomed. It was a desolate land until its own children. He's got more to prove. He's got more. He has to prove more to me. I breathe in divine energy. I got enough. I know enough. The Jewish people didn't know God existed, so God gave him 10 plagues. We know. You want to find out plagues? Just look at our history. Just look back. Just look back. There's stuff that you, it's, it's not explainable based on logic terms. We got enough. Now God goes, I want you to be great. Go out there and go out there and slaughter the things that are holding you back. Go break those boards. You can do it. Be free from your own limitations. Because I can't put you anywhere in this world and make you free. You got to free yourself from Egypt. You got to opt into this game. Once we get there, man, man, I hope I get there in life. I really do. And I hope you get there too. You may, you may be there. You may be there. You may be looking going, of course, Charlie. If you're going, of course, that's cool. But if you're willing, if we are willing, as Michael just, Michael just texted, if you're willing to identify the idols in your life, the idols that we serve, comfort and acceptance and needing everyone to love us all the time and being scared to look at all the stuff, whatever you got, ego, I've got to be right. She, she can call me. She can call me. You know what? Let him call me. You know, the people to the right of me, they're fanatics. Really? That idol that we have, that I have to always feel right. I have to always feel comfortable. I have to always feel like I, I'm, in the, I'm in a good spot. I'm, I can't be vulnerable. If we're willing to take that idol and smash it, we're willing, we'll be able to walk out of our own Egypts this Passover. And that's what I believe God wants of us. I think he wants us to sit at that Seder. Look at that matzah. The humility of the matzah. To look around and go, they did this. This is in my genes. I could do this. I could do this. I got stuff that's holding me back. I'd rather fight to get out of Egypt than get stuck here for the rest of my life. And I know God's going to help me. I know it. I don't care if I could articulate it or prove it to some quasi-atheist that's sitting around. I don't need to do that. I, I know it. I know it at a level that is beyond even my logic, as Lee Ron mentioned earlier. I know. And I'm willing to find out. That's real greatness. That's real greatness. Oh, all right. Tomorrow we'll uh, we'll close out before Passover. But I want I want Passover to really be transformative for us. I really do. Let it not just be another holiday. Let it be something that when we come out, we're different people. But the Jews came out of Egypt; they're different. Well, guess what? Let's walk out of our own Egypt's this holiday. Won't be easy. Wasn't easy for them. 
They spent four years in the desert. They had ups, they had downs. They're still, we're still figuring it out. It don't matter. But at least they're out. All right, everybody, have an amazing day. With God's help. I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,